My name is Varun Malik, and I'm the CEO of Consolidon. Uh, we are a new age consulting firm. We like to say powered by a digital platform. We love hosting events on topical uh, subjects such as the topic today. Uh, this event is hosted by Consolidon together with uh, ACCA and Fazila is moderating this session, Fazila from ACCA. And uh, without further ado, over to you, Fazila. Fantastic, thank you so much. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Fazila Gopalani and I'm the head of ACCA for the Middle East. I'm also an ACCA member and I've managed my own accounting practice in the UK and tax was an area where I did start my career in. Obviously it didn't end my career with that because I'm in a completely different field now, but obviously you know, leading an accounting profession in this region um, tax for so many of our ACCA members and our CFOs and finance people that work out there is such an important hot topic for us right now. So following this development on 31st of January 2022, the Ministry of Finance of the UAE announced the introduction of federal corporate tax regime on business profits. This effective for financial year starting on or after the 1st of June 2023. It is my absolute pleasure to be moderating this panel discussion on corporate tax with these powerhouses that I have with me, Shiraz, Arafat, Medat, and Mohammed, who I'm going to introduce in a little while. I do understand that the Ministry of Finance has issued a consultation document outlining the guidelines. So nothing is set in stone as yet. There are guidelines out there and Businesses, firms, specialists, everybody have been given the opportunity to feedback on this document by this Thursday with their points. And then I think going forward, we are going to get more sort of official documentation around all the rules and regulations of corporate tax. Now, what's important is many of us have worked cross border, many of us worked in different countries. So you always try to say, well, is that what used to happen in the UK? Or is that how it was relevant, you know, in Australia or the US? And many of you might have different questions like this to see how different is the corporation tax regime going to be here versus all those other countries that we have worked in um, in that area of tax. So these powerhouses that I have, first one, Shiraz Khan, he's the head of tax at Ulta Mimi and Company, which is one of the leading tax practice firms in the region. He has over 20 years of experience in international tax structuring, including inbound and outbound for the Middle East region. Arafat Umar Naivala, is a managing partner and risk and compliance advisory lead at Compliance 360 Consultants. He has 19 years of experience in the EMA region and has worked with large corporates like EY, PwC, and Union Properties. Medat Elabad is the director of internal audit at the Al Habdul Group and is a seasoned finance and audit professional with over 25 years of experience in several entities, including government and family owned businesses. And lastly, we're joined by Mohammed Atta Al Haq, who is actually an ACCA member, CPA Canada as well. He's worked as an audit manager for EY, Dubai in the past, but currently he's talking to us from Canada and is working for a multinational organization as a finance director. First of all, thank you ever so much to all of you for sparing your time to come and speak to the audience here who have joined to know a little bit more about corporate tax in the UAE, the future, the implementation plan, you know, what's the impact assessment? Um, what is going to happen once we have implemented all these changes? And then what's the compliance stuff? So I would say to all those listeners out there, please start typing away with your questions because this is the opportunity to ask the leaders in this part of the world questions on anything that you want to know about this. Yeah. 
I spoke to her in the morning. In yeah. the meantime, <laughs> could you all please mute yourself so that um, uh, so that we're not all talking over each other? Post your questions, and without further ado, let's start with my questions that I have first of all. Um, my first question is going to be for Shiraz. We all sort of know the answer to this, but I still would like to hear it from you. Why is corporate tax needed in the UAE? Why corporate taxes? Um, this was a region where entities and companies have come to a tax haven, and now all their profits are going to be taxable. Thank you, Fazila. Um, tax authorities love tax. Yeah. Um, only, only joking. So I, I think that there's a number of reasons. Of course, if you look at tax in any country, uh, it's a key revenue generator for any given country, and it contributes significantly to the government's revenues, which enables the country to fund its public expenditure, like schools, uh, you know, hospitals, infrastructure. Uh, so that's the reason why tax is important, and of, of course, governments would like to put tax in place. Uh, but, but that's not the key driver. Of course, it, it helps fund additional revenue. It helps the UAE diversify uh, government revenues. Uh, but the real driver behind the introduction of corporate tax is, is actually something else. Uh, I just wanted to let everyone know corporate tax isn't something new. It's actually been in discussion in the UAE even before VAT was introduced. Uh, but at the time VAT was introduced, they decided to hold off on implementing corporate tax. And historically, as you said, because one of the main attractive uh, factors of this region is uh, the low or no taxes. Uh, so that's why they've, they've always wanted to maintain that profile. And of course, corporate tax, which hits the bottom line of organizations, is a, it can be a disincentive to businesses. So what drove the introduction of corporate tax? International tax developments. So around 2008, 2009, when there was a global financial crisis, uh, a lot of countries went into budget deficit. So what did they do to generate additional revenue? They approached the, uh, the OECD, the G20 countries approached the OECD, and they asked them to look into ways uh, where, they, where the OECD can recommend measures on how to stop multinationals uh, avoiding tax or paying less tax. Uh, so the OECD, of course, uh, were conscious that the, the international tax rules were outdated at the time. So they need to introduce new rules uh, and develop them. Uh, they recommended 15 action points as part of the a project called the BEPS project, base erosion and profit shifting. That in turn naturally led to another project called the BEPS 2 project, uh, under, under which pillar two is of key importance. Now under pillar two, there was a proposal uh, which got uh, acceptance from all the BEPS inclusive members, uh, which is over 100 countries, that there should be a, a global uh, minimum effective tax rate of 15%. So if at that stage the UAE didn't do anything, there was a risk at least some of the UAE companies would be taxed in other countries. So of mm. course, in order to fund public expenditure uh, and also prevent UAE tax uh, companies being taxed in other countries, it's better for the UAE to introduce corporate tax. Wow, that was a fantastic um, setting the scene um, to understand why corporate tax. So then my next question is still for you. Why 9%? Where did that 9% come from? Uh, as you said, uh, UAE has always been an attractive region. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a regional business hub. It's also a global financial center. Uh, and they want to keep the regime very attractive. And of course, there's a lot of uh, com com competition in the region in different countries. And that, play that was one of the main factors beh behind setting the standard rate at 9%. There's, of course, a 0% rate, and there's also a higher rate, which is likely to be 15%. So if you look around the region, 9% uh, in the GCC is the lowest tax rate, uh, which keeps UAE attractive and competitive. Thank you. OK, that was fantastic. Thank you, Shiraz. So, Arafat, my question for you is, um, is the introduction of corporate tax expected to have an impact on the economic substance regulations? Well, thanks, thanks, Fazila, uh, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting question. So, as you know, and as you mentioned, like there is uh, no law has yet been come out. But uh, based on our experience, like what we are expecting um, is that 
the companies who uh, come under the ambit of the corporate taxation uh, they might need uh, they might not need to comply with the esr however uh, as you know like some of uh, the companies who are registered with the free zones they might uh, be enjoying the tax holidays so in this case uh, esr will apply on them but as a generally you ask uh, the people who are under the ambit of the corporate tax they don't need to comply with the esr this is based on our expectation uh, because you know the law has not yet come to, uh, i mean come out so we can't say um, with the i mean we are not sure about that but this is based on our experience like we are suspecting that okay yeah. I, I All right, presume, if I could add a few comments sure, there. Sure. Uh, I mean, one of the re main reasons why econo economic substance was introduced because there was no corporate tax in the UAE. Yeah. And of course, once corporate tax is introduced, a lot of entities uh, will be subject to corporate tax. So they'll be filing tax returns. So my expectation is, although there's been no announcement in this regard, is that probably economic substance regulations may be phased out. Uh, mm. And as was mentioned, you know, there may be a requirement for free zone companies to, to maintain economic substance, but whether that's, uh, uh, you know, under the uh, economic substance regulations or otherwise, it remains to be seen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, somebody's asking if we could define ESR from the chat box. Who'd yeah. like to answer that? Uh, Shiraz, or yeah. I can answer that as well. Uh, ESR is the economic substance regulation. And the main objective of the ESR is, uh, as, as what Shiraz, Shiraz mentioned, it's, uh, it's a base erosion profit uh, shifting, which was happening from other part of the world to the UAE, as you mentioned, like there was no tax uh, in the UAE earlier. So there was a chance that some companies, they, they park their profit over here. So that's why, uh, based on the recommendation of the OECD, uh, UAE government, they have introduced the ESR regulation. Uh, where, whereas in this regulation, if you earlier, earlier than the corporate tax, if you are registered in here and if you are working in here, then you have to uh, share the knowledge or share the data with the other part of the, I mean, other governments as well. So that was the objective of the ESR. Fabulous. Thank you for answering that question. Um, Medat. So will internal organization and systems be able to cope with corporation tax from the 1st of June 2023? And what changes are needed to build sustainable processes around compliance and reporting? Which is a very important question for an internal auditor. <laughs> yeah, well, that's actually one of the main questions and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it requires a lot of uh, actions to determine a proper answer for that. Uh, let's say that uh, if we go and speak about what or how we can answer such question, because each organization has to do its own uh, uh, checking and, and the processes to, to go through it. So uh, this, the recommended process to be followed here uh, that we have to consider corporate income tax implementation as a project. Uh, usually uh, our operational mind takes over in every possible stand and they consider that uh, income tax implementation is just an operational matter. It's not an operational matter, it's a project which must have a clear defined objectives. Uh, we have to create an internal supervision structure such as steering committee, project committee and the project manager even. It's like a normal project which we must have to deal with it as a project and therefore we have to take it in the organization itself and we have to dissect the organization into departments as per the organization chart and review each and every bit of internal systems, processes, policies, contracts, et cetera, et cetera. Each organization also needs to appoint a consultant to support in this, in this project because uh, it's not, it cannot be done alone and we need a 360 degrees view. Uh, and uh, from experience, it's not possible to do it by internal uh, internal resources alone. We need some kind of uh, a feedback and third eye or a peer review to happen by a consultant. And also we have to understand that if we look to the organization and I'm, 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 I may be a little bit off the subject, but it's actually related to the subject. If you look to any organization, uh, our strategy in every organization is having four main areas. We are talking about the financial areas. We are talking about employee-related areas. We are talking about customers and suppliers-related areas. And we are talking about 
other stakeholders such as government authorities, compliance, and so on with them. So uh, uh, each organization has to do this whole process of checking, re revamping, redoing it, their, their, their operational model in to order to reach to a balance point where all the factors there are collected together while we are doing the maximum compliance for income tax as in order to avoid any kind of major compliance issues. So if I want to summarize it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So anybody mm -hmm. think that you can get over with it in six months, please don't think about that. That's not possible. You are actually looking up to us as a marathon, which will start from now, and it will end by end of the first return, the moment you bought your first tax return. It's a project and it's not an operational activity, and therefore it must have a beginning time, it must have an end time. It must have a proper different structure than our normal operational internal structure. It cannot go with the same supervision we are having now. Hmm. We have to spend more time in planning. It's not, uh, it's a project and therefore project requires more planning than operational activities. So therefore we have to take a little bit more time in planning. We need to upscale our team. And uh, please don't underestimate for everybody, do not underestimate upscaling the team effect. You, you must have, all organizations must have champions who understand tax in every department so they can act as trained or trainer. So your defense line is starting from the first line of defense, the person who is meeting the, 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 the customer, not the finance, not the, not the audit, not the tax team. And of course, we need to have, uh, uh, need to have a consultant. We can actually have a consultant, internal consultant. We can hire somebody who is ex, uh, ex, uh, ex consultant background, or we can have a consultant from outside and still we can have our own internal project management team as well. So they can cooperate, coordinate and so on. This, will, this is more effective than having a consultant doing everything. Mm -hmm. And I would like to uh, give everybody a very good news. We have uh, survived the Corona COVID-19, so we can do it. <laughs> Don't worry too much about it. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I think some good points there. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, I also like the fact about you need to spend more time planning. And I live by saying, if you plan to fail, you plan no. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So that whole planning element is fantastic. Upskilling team, and I liked the magic word, uh, tax champion within the or champions within the organization. So thank you for those points, Medat. Mohammed, what conversations do we need to have within our organizations to ensure a no surprise transition to operating within this tax, corporate tax environment? Thanks, Fadila. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a great question. So, uh, so basically, uh, we need we should increase the awareness uh, across the board. That is the starting point with all the stakeholders, specifically the finance and accounting team. And why we need to do this? Because we need to. It's it's a pretty new process. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we need to ensure that we understand the process and how it is going to impact different processes. For example, uh, timing of the year end closing. It's not that. After the implementation of corporate tax, it's not that you can close your ERN um, late because you know uh, you will have a deadline for the corporate tax filing. So we need to make sure that we close our ERN in a timely manner. So that's one thing. The second thing is that, for example, if you have group companies, multiple entities, we need to understand that we need to have set and defined policies uh, when it comes to the pricing between the inter companies because of the transfer pricing policies. So that's another important factor to consider. The third thing is that <clears throat> uh, when it comes to the small and medium organization and to a great extent for the large organizations as well, uh, it will have an impact on your cash flows as well. So let's make sure that uh, we need to plan for it in advance uh, to make sure that everything has been covered. So the bottom line is that uh, when it comes to uh, the implementation of corporate tax and the role of the accounting and finance team, uh, we need to make sure that we, number one, we have up-to-date information. The second thing is that uh, we need to start planning for it 
Uh, it's not that it's uh, the deadline or the implementation dates are for 2023. So, uh, but the thing is that the key to this whole process is that we need to start planning for it now. And the third thing is we need to, we also need to understand what additional resources are required to implement the process. Thanks. Fantastic, thank you. I mean, um, I'm just putting a sort of going off topic for a, a second. Um, from the, the full panel list that we have, who has given feedback on this consultation agreement document? Have any of you given feedback? Well, uh, I didn't give it yet, but we have collected, we sat down internally, okay. we had the uh, brainstorming and so on. We are ready to give it uh, by 19. Okay. Uh, and uh, there is a workshop. You're uh, on mute, Shiraz. Yeah. And there is a workshop actually uh, offered by the Ministry of Finance for the big uh, local groups and so on, which will happen yeah. on the 19th as well. Mm. So we will be attending and offering our uh, our point of view on some, some certain concerns we have. Okay, because that's actually, my point. Actually, uh, yeah. we, we not officially we have given from our side, but we are talking to the client and we are suggesting okay. to the client. So we are expecting that those clients will officially submit their response. Fabulous. Yeah. Shiraz, what were you saying? I was just saying we've given some feedback uh, in, in response to this consultation, uh, as well as previously when the previous announcement was made. Okay, and so would you say that what's in this document isn't set in stone? And is there hope that when people have given and businesses, key stakeholders have given their feedback, things will change, do you think? We are expecting. Yeah, that's the purpose. Yeah. That's the purpose of the consultation to take on feedback. So nothing is in, set in stone. Of course, I think the key uh, decisions in terms of policy decisions have already been taken. You could see uh, some of the decisions that have been taken. I don't think that those are likely to change, but they will consider feedback. OK, fantastic, because that leads me on to my next question. Mm -hmm which is for MEDAT, um, what types of, and this is going into the nitty gritty accounting stuff, because so I, I can see loads of questions coming up. I think we've got 32 <laughs> messages right now and they're very intricate, detailed questions. Um, what types of expenses are expected to be deductible for corporation tax purposes? Because I heard that there is no deduction for something like depreciation and amortization which is so different to what it is in the UK. So are you able to just give a few examples? Yeah, well, actually, it's, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is something which keeps happening whenever we have a new thing coming out. So we have so many rumors and gossip in the market without any base. Actually, uh, the income tax in, in most of the whole world, I can say, without any kind of differentiation, uh, is differentiating between two major streams of expenses. One of them is operational expense, and the other one is capital expenditure. So usually they have a, any regulation for income tax, if, even if you look to the area, the MENA, MENA area, or if you look to Europe, if you look anywhere, you'll find always there is a differentiation between both. Mm. Now, uh, uh, again, as a, thumb rule, as a thumb rule, for all operational expenses, they are allowed except if it's for personal purpose. As a thumb rule except yeah. few, few options or few exceptions which are uh, different from country to country based on what the country wants to encourage in their economy. Example, sometimes they use the tax as an incentive to encourage a specific industrial activity or a specific uh, sector in their economy and so on. So other than this, usually the operational expenses are all, including depreciation, are all permitted to be taken. Mm. But the capital expenditure is the trickier part <laughs> because it has so many factors they keep playing around it. So let's say, for example, if we speak about the building which we are buying, then they will not allow you to take all the income, all the building as an expense, for example, or they will not allow you to put it there. They will have so many regulations and so many areas, most probably about the capital expenditures because it depends on the asset lifetime. It depends on how we are going to depreciate it. It depends on how we are going to maintain it. There are so many, many aspects of it. So, and they cannot, um, I go back to Shiraz, what he said in the beginning, income tax is a revenue generator for the government. And they want it to be steady and stable revenue. It cannot be fluctuating. So they cannot allow people just to buy things in hundreds of millions of dirhams and then deduct from, their income, from the tax, no way. So 
this all will apply about the capital expenditure in this particular manner. Of course, mm -hmm. we can tell more when we have regulation. They were, they were actually silent about the capital expenditure and the expenditure in general in the consultation documents. They didn't speak about it. So that's why I'm expecting them for them. I'm expecting them to follow the same rules like everywhere, more or less. So it's not going to be a unique situation, if I may say, because uh, if you look to the economic sectors here, which are leading the whole market, we will we are looking about real estate. So they cannot actually, yeah, they cannot damage this sector. They cannot damage the tourism sector. They cannot damage the airline or or travel sector. So there are some sectors which heavy and on the capital expenditure. So I'm expecting to have a very simple rules compared to places like UK or my country, Egypt, for example, and so on. Mm -hmm. I hope this answers the question. I think that was a really good answer because I do know that a lot of finance uh, professionals are concerned about this. From what I've been seeing as ACCA members messaging us, and I think that's answered it really well, especially the fact about how dependent this economy is on real estate tourism. And so they won't do anything to affect that. So uh, that's um, very well answered. So thank you ever so much for that. And I think, uh, Fazila, this is, Hi, this is linked to your previous question where you asked like whether they will take into consideration or not. So, I mean, definitely these things will be taken into consideration. And as what we know, uh, the UAE government uh, from the past experience, they are always taking care about uh, the people, you know. Yeah. So they will they will definitely take into the consideration about uh, all the recommendations which might come from the businesses. So mm -hmm. yeah. Fabulous. Yes, Shiraz. Thank you, Arafat. Uh, I was just going to say the the system in the UAE is quite simple. So uh, the ba the baseline proposition is that uh, in line with your accounts all expenses will be deductible, provided that they've been incurred for the purpose of generating taxable income. And mm. they've been wholly and exclusively incurred for the purpose of the business. Uh, there are going to be some limitations, very, very limited limitations. So we understand, for example, the interest deduction will be limited to 30% of a bit. Uh, there's also going to be specific expenses which are disallowed. So for example, if you've incurred some fines if you've got some irrecoverable, uh, irrecoverable VAT, uh, if you've paid uh, a donation to a charity uh, which is not registered, for example. So these things will not specifically not be deductible. Mm -hmm. I mean, this all does, going into the intricates really does show how important upskilling and training is going to be in this area the organizations have to do. And it goes back to what Medat was saying about having an external consultant that is, uh, you know, on top of all of this, just to ensure um, compliance and that you're doing everything on you as large entities and organizations that you all finance professionals are working at are doing this correctly. Um, and, and, and I've got loads of questions on compliance and what if not, and what are the fines and penalties, but we'll come to that in a minute. Um, we'll go to this other area, Mohammed, um, on transfer pricing. So will transfer pricing rules impact the transactions between related parties in the UAE and cross-border? Thanks, Fazila. Uh, once again, great question. Um, yes, it will have an impact uh, between the transactions uh, among the group companies. So basically, what is transfer pricing? I think you guys already know that it, it refers to the pricing policies between the group companies. Um, and uh, why it is important? Because after the implementation of the corporate tax, it's not that you can buy and sell between the two group companies at any price you like or you want. Uh, basically, there are methods available to determine uh, the prices between the group companies. For example, cost plus method or resale minus method. There are different methods available. It depends on the country specific rules as well. And you can choose any method, but uh, the most important thing is we need to be consistent with our accounting policies. Um, and uh, the, the key to this whole transfer pricing is basically the general rule is that uh, is, is to prevent the profit shifting from the high tax rate countries to low tax rate countries. So that's the key for key idea behind this. 
Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, so, Araf, but will the income earned by a freelance professional be subject to the UAE corporate tax? Because the reason I'm asking this question is what I'd heard is that corporation tax is not just to be paid by companies, it's by any individual who has a trade license. Partners within the partnership individually also have to apply to pay corporate taxes. I mean, I'm only talking for the UK because that's my experience, but that's a bit different to what it is in the UK. So could you just talk to us a little bit about who a taxable entity, corporate individual exactly is according to the rules given? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Fazila. It's a very interesting question, and I have received many inquiries related to that as well. Uh, so as far as we know, based on the frequently asked questions and whatever the information we have received so far, so uh, the free zone license, uh, sorry, uh, free, uh, freelance license, it, it is subject to the tax. So anyone, uh, I mean, you can you can understand in this way, Anyone in uh, in this part of the world, if he wants, he or she wants to do the business, and if he needs the license for that, so it is taxable. So anyone who is earning in their personal capacity, so there is no taxation on that. I mean, just I can give you the example if one individual who has some real estate, and if he's earning some rentals out of it, so as a personal capacity, there is no tax on him. But if he is doing any activity which requires him to get the license then it is subject to the tax. So, I mean, uh, globally, I mean, if I can see, if I can sum up, um, I mean, uh, the whole discussion for the free, uh, freelancer uh, license, yes, there is a tax. It's, it's not a good news, but yeah, there is a tax. <laughs> All right, fantastic, thank you. Um, so if we just move on to a topic about corporate tax impact assessment. Um, I have a question here, and I thought it was 9%, but maybe not. What is the expected, uh, this is for Arafat, sorry. Um, what is the expected tax rate for UAE entities that are part of large multinationals? All is right. it still 9%? Uh, not, not really. I mean, it's not that straightforward. So first of all, um, you have to understand the definition of the large multinationals. Who are the large mm -hmm. multinationals, right? So the large multinational, as per the definition, if any multinational company, if they're earning 3.15 billion dirham as a revenue, so they will be considered as a large multinationals. And as per, as, as what Shiraz mentioned earlier, as per the base erosion profit shifting rules, which was introduced um, by the OECD, and UAE is a part of that framework as well. So, BAP, uh, I mean, in, in BAP, actually, there are two um, uh, pillars, which is pillar one and pillar two. So as per pillar uh, BAP two, uh, the minimum effective tax rate will be applied, which is 15%. Mm -hmm. So any multinational, if first of all, they have to assess themselves, whether they are, uh, you know, uh, if they are fulfilling the requirement or fulfilling the definition of the large multinationals, if yes, then they will be subject to uh, the BAPS 2, and which is uh, they have to pay a minimum effective tax rate, which is 15%. And there are other rules will apply on them as well. So that's why, as what Midad mentioned, tax planning is very important. So I think right, right now is the time where everyone has to uh, do the tax planning as well, and not from the tax planning perspective as well. I mean, they have to look into their organizational system as well. There are so many things as, as, as what you mentioned. So they have to look into the different aspects and they have to make a team and they need to have, I would not say the consultant, but they need to have the subject matter expert, whether internally yeah. or from the outside as well. They need to have mm -hmm. the subject matter expert and um, they need to have the people who understand the system as well. They need to have the people who understand the taxation, the law itself, uh, locally and globally as well. So um, for the large multinational, I think this is the high time where they have okay. to plan themselves and they have to take things into consideration. Mm, okay, fantastic. Thank you, Arafa. Shiraz, um, will, I've got two questions here. Will tax holidays continue to apply to free zone entities? That's my first question. 
Sure, thanks, Fazila. Um, so free zones are a very important part of the UAE economy. And when they previously announced that corporate tax would be introduced, uh, they confirmed that they will preserve any exemptions, incentives or tax holidays in free zones. However, it wasn't a blanket exemption. So there were some limitations. And previously they, they announced that if you don't comply with the regulatory requirements or you do business with the mainland, uh, then you will fall outside uh, the scope of that treatment. Uh, at that time, they didn't confirm what that actually means. Now, in the recent consultation document, they've gone one step further and they've gone into a little bit more detail. So we understand from the consultation document that if, if you have a free zone entity which has transactions with non-residents, they'll be outside the scope of, of corporate tax or subject to a 0% tax rate. Also, transactions within the free zone will be subject to a 0% tax rate uh, and transactions between free zones. Um, however, you know, if, if there are any other transactions uh, which are taken other than these ones, uh, then you'd be disqualified from the zero rate. Uh, and, and also any payments which are made by mainland entities to the, the entities in the free zone, which are subject, subject to a 0% rate, uh, they'll be subject to withholding tax at 0%. It's interesting that, you know, th there is a withholding tax. It's not that there's no withholding mm. tax, but the rate initially will be 0%. So uh, the expectation being that in the future, that rate can be increased at some point. Okay, okay. Azila, if you allow me, I just want to add one thing here. Uh, because uh, last time um, when, when I did a couple of uh, webinars, we, we were keep seeing that there is no withholding tax. But uh, after this consultation document, there is a withholding tax. But the interesting part is it is a zero person uh, right now, but it might increase later on. Mm, mm. This is an interesting part, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I, uh, I also heard. And the reason if for I, that uh, being zero was the potential to then increase it. At least yeah. it's there as zero right now. So, Shiraz, will the UAE holding companies be exempt from corporation tax? Potentially. So it really depends on if they're a pure holding company or not. So if they are holding company, as in they, they have shares in a company and that's their sole function. So the only income they receive is income and capital gains. It depends if they meet the requirements of an exemption, which is available. It's called the participation exemption. Now, one of the key conditions for this exemption is that you need to have 5% ownership of the subsidiary. And also, if it's a foreign subsidiary, then the foreign subsidiary should be subject to tax uh, at a rate of 9% or more. So this mm. is a key requirement in terms of benefiting from the participation exemption. Now, in terms of if you have any other income and you're not a pure holding company, uh, then that income could, could, would be taxable in the normal way. Okay. Okay, fantastic. I think we've got about 40 questions. Um, in the chat box, but I'll come to them in a little while. Keep those questions coming. You can see how much this is such a hot topic. And of every th point that you're saying, I can see questions coming in, but I will try to address them. Just give me five more minutes to ask some of these questions that might actually cover some of the questions that you are asked, you have asked. And then I, I will, uh, inshallah, try to go through them. Because um, it's like, one topic opens up a can of worms that has another 10 questions to it. Um, okay, so thank you for that answer. I've got um, a couple of questions about corporation tax implementation of the changes. So Shiraz, will offshore companies be subject to corporation tax? We've just addressed holding companies. Now, what about offshore companies? And if so, okay, so first of all, will they be, are they subject to tax? If by offshore companies, you mean non-resident companies, yeah. it depends on whether they have a permanent establishment. Uh, so there's this international concept, which will also be implemented here in the UAE. If you have a fixed place of business through which you carry on a business, or otherwise you have a dependent agent in the UAE who habitually exercises the authority uh, to conclude contracts on your behalf, then you'll have a permanent establishment and you'd be taxable here. Uh, in, in some of the free zones, we also have offshore companies and these offshore companies don't don't have any activity. So potentially they, they may have a filing obligation, but, but no tax to pay. It really depends okay. on what they're doing. It's got to look at the structure. So then what about a UAE branch of a foreign entity 
that are subject to corporation tax in the jurisdiction of their head office, will they be subject to UAE corporation tax? Yes, um, it, it kind of like is a similar answer to what I've just said. So yeah. if, if they have a branch here in the UAE, they'll have a permanent um, establishment, so they'll be taxable yeah. here. But they, they may also potentially be taxable in their home country, and I'd expect their home country to have uh, either an exemption for the branch or to give them some sort of uh, tax credit. So they'll be yeah. able to deduct any taxes they pay in the UAE against any taxes they're paying in their home country. Yeah. Yeah, got it, got it, Fab. Um, Arafa, when will the corporation tax law and further details on corporation tax be published, do you think? Because we're talking about implementation for finan any financial years after 1st of June 2023, which is a year in a year's time, right? I mean, uh, based on the information or based on the communication so far, uh, what we are expecting is, uh, I mean, they were saying mid of 2022, it was expecting. So maybe we are expecting next month or maybe the following month, but not more than that. Yeah. Okay. So that would give ample time, 10 yeah. months for organizations to get the house in order, look at the structure, exactly. et cetera. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I mean, that's smiling. Yeah. Is there yeah, anything you would just... like to add? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just uh, want to add that don't wait for the regulations, please. Start to, uh, mm, I advise everybody point. to start working yeah. and planning, re reviewing the legal structure of the company, uh, doing whatever can be done without waiting for the regulation. We know for sure that they are going to follow IFRS or whatever uh, standard. So uh, go and check everything as possible. Maybe it seems like a duplication of work, but uh, better safe than sorry, because this is an income tax, not VET just uh, yeah. emphasizing on this like we have to be extremely compliant as much as possible yeah so and, and I think, don't uh, wait we, get we, start now basically yes yeah. start now it's a marathon and you don't wait for the regulation there are lots of lot, lots of and lots of things to be done before the regulation comes out yeah. uh Very to change the, to take an example and everybody will relate uh, for what i'm saying to change your ERB system and make some modification, it takes a couple of months. Mm. Mm. And before you do it, you know you need to know what you what you want to do in the system. So, but, so a discovery of six months, uh, changes of system for another six months, testing the system for another six months. That's one year and a half. Even if we shrink it a little bit, it's one year. So, it has to be done like now, not not yesterday. It's before yesterday, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Arafat, were you wanting to add anything? No, I think it's it's a very good that, point uh, what Medhat mentioned. And I think this is a very, very right time because as you mentioned earlier, if you plan properly, it is very important to plan properly because many organizations, they don't take it very seriously, you know? And mm -hmm. they say like, uh, okay, fine. I mean, first uh, return will, uh, you know, it will be applicable after one year or Still, we have a nine months to submit the return as well. But it's not about the return only. It's about the transaction. I mean, mm. you are doing the transaction on a daily basis, which will be applicable from the next year. So if you don't do things in a, in a proper way on a timely manner, so it will be backlog, you know, uh, later on. So maybe you are missing out something over here and then maybe you are catching up. So I think it's, it's very important to plan properly. And, yeah, and I mean, being a last minute dot com and rushing things, near the time is going yes. to make you make mistakes right and then there's a greater risk business risk post that um yeah. on what could happen because of that so okay good piece of advice from the powerhouses don't wait start now um i've got a question about to shiraz how will the corporation tax returns be filed i mean in my olden days in the UK, we still used to fill in papers and then send them, right? I'm sure they've got some sort of electronic way of doing this now. Uh, they have in the UK, but well, how will it be done here? And what supporting documents are going to be expected? Because it is self-assessment based, right? That's correct. So you have to self-assess the tax uh, and then the tax authority, once you submit the tax return, will audit the tax return and obviously ask you any questions that you may have. Uh, they may ask for any other information. Uh, in terms of how it would be submitted, the FDA currently have a portal 
Uh, so the expectation is that it would be submitted electronically on that portal as well. Uh, the tax return is expected to have some schedules as well. Uh, we don't know what the schedules are, but presumably they, they may be related to tax losses relief or group relief. Uh, I don't think there'll be any requirement to submit any other supporting documentation with the tax return. But of course, as a taxpayer, you have to ensure that the tax return is complete uh, and correct. And therefore, you have to maintain all documentation to support the tax return. So things like contracts, uh, invoices, and uh, all the financial statements as well, uh, you, you, ha you have to maintain to, to, to ensure that your, the tax return is complete and correct. And so you could demonstrate that as well. Okay, fabulous, thank you. Okay, I am gonna to go to the questions in the chat box. I, I'll have to read them before I ask them and there's 40 of them, so just bear with me. But while I do that, I have one question for Shiraz. What is the impact of corporate tax on government companies? You're on mute. Okay. <laughs> okay. Apologies for that. No uh, there, there is an exemption for governments. Uh, there's also an exemption for uh, entities which are wholly owned by the government. Uh, and there's going to be a cabinet decision which will provide a list potentially of the entities which will be exempt under this category. Uh, but again, if, if the government uh, or the government entity carries on uh, activity which are of a sovereign nature, uh, then these exemptions will apply. If the government uh, or the entity wholly owned by the government, they carry on activities which are not of a sovereign nature, uh, in other words, a commercial activity, then that may be taxable. And in relation to the entities which are wholly owned by the government, my understanding is that exemption won't be automatic. So you may have to apply uh, in addition to the, the cabinet list. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Right. We've got 12 minutes, and I think we could run over maybe by one or two minutes, right? Because I, um, I know all of you have taken time out for this session. So we're gonna do like a rapid fire round of questions. Um, I would advise the panelists to open up um, the, ch the chat box as well. I'm gonna start from the bottom. I will read the questions out. I won't put ask a particular person. Anyone wants to answer, just, Put your hand up or just speak and answer the question. So one of them is, um, oh goodness, and now I, 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 under them, they just keep coming up. Okay, do we apply for TIN number prior to tax return? Do we have to apply for a TIN number? Yes, yes, the answer is yes. Okay, fantastic. That was a very good rapid fire round. Um, Somebody said, sorry, I'm already lost. So free zone companies exempt from corporate tax if transfer from mainland to free zone, withholding tax, yes, but at 0% for now. Did I get that right? Yes, you got that yes. right, right? It's 0% for now yeah. with the potential for it to increase. That's right. If I may Happiness? add, if I may add quickly for everybody, for the benefit of everybody, in a nutshell, Every company with a license here in the country must register for income tax. And again, just uh, because we don't want to confuse ourselves between exempt and zero rated. Nobody, according to this, is exempt except the government, some of the government owned entities or some stipulation they will make. Every country geographically in UAE, with an office or a license in UAE, they must file for registration for income tax. Okay. Fantastic, uh, thank you. Fazila, well, before you yes. move on, just a yep. small piece of advice specifically for the uh, free zone entities. It's a very gray and very uh, important area. So again, uh, I would say like planning is very important because uh, it is 0%, but there are certain uh, conditions. For example, if a free zone company is earning the passive income, it is not subject to tax, it is 0%. And if a free zone is an entity uh, dealing with the free zone, it's zero percent. If any entity, um, I mean the group company who is holding in the mainland, and if they are dealing uh, with the free zone company, this is also zero percent. So there are a lot of um, you know the requirements which has to have uh, in the planning session. Even for the mainland company, if they want to do uh, the structuring of their organization in order to make. Um, I mean, take the benefit of the taxation, they have to have uh, this thing in, in their plate, actually. 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Will there be any requirement for tax deduction at source? No. Tax deduction at source is basically withholding tax. So there'll be uh, yeah. withholding tax at 0%, at least initially. Okay. And, and there's a second uh, question as well. Uh, sorry. Yeah, go, go, Shiraz. Answer the second question. Yeah, the, the second question, there will be transfer pricing requirements if you're subject to the rules, so submitting the master file, local file, and there'll also be disclosure requirements as well. If, if, you, if your related party transactions meet a certain threshold, uh, we don't know what that threshold is at this stage. Okay. I've got a question uh, for a small business owner that's not a freelancer, so a small business. Um, say... That, so they take a salary and all the profit goes into their pocket. Can they just pay themselves a higher salary and therefore have a lower annual profit and lower corporation tax? No, straight on. I don't think that would be the right thing to do. I think I could answer that. Uh, I wanted that to say before, <laughs> may that say anything? Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, if you're... If, if you're the owner, you'll be a connected person. Uh, so you, you have to make sure that w whatever you're paying yourself is market value. Uh, yeah. So you, you, they are restrictions for excessive deductions. Okay, very good question, which I heard um, I've been he hearing recently is a lot about losses. And I don't think we spoke about that here. So if a company makes a loss, can they carry forward that against the profits Next, the following year? And if so, how many years back can they go of losses to carry forward? Who can answer that? Uh, the indication... Uh, I yeah, could go answer ahead. that. Go ahead. Sir. Carry on. No, go ahead, Madai. I'll, I'll add anything to if, you, if I okay. need to. You, you yeah, can I'll, uh, no usually, uh, whatever we understand so far is 70% of the profit can be adjusted against previous year's losses. And uh, it's up to five years. This is our understanding so far. So we can carry okay. the losses for five years and we can take up to 70% from the profit to offset the losses, but not all the profit. Okay. Yes. So uh, Fazil, I would like to add something here that um, it is another important point to understand that it is possible that you think that it is a loss, but your accounting loss might be different from the tax profit. So accounting profit and tax profits are completely two different things. Um, so it might be a different pictures after you uh, start calculating the corporate tax and it, uh, the net result might also differ. So it's really important to understand that irrespective of profit or losses, when it comes to the uh, tax assessment for any specific fiscal year, uh, we need to uh, assess it, calculate it and make sure that we account for it. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. For an offshore company registered in JAVSA, is corporation tax applicable on rental income on property in Dubai? First question. Second question, on profit on sale of property in Dubai. There's no specific answer to that in the consultation document. We do know that there's, there's certain types of income which will not, which will be taxable at the zero zero percent rate. So as I mentioned, you know, uh, transactions with non-residents within the free zone, between free zones, uh, certain passive income as well, like interest, dividends, uh, royalties, and capital gains um, for, 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 from the mainland. So we don't know if that covers, you know, the sale of properties or not. Uh, but I, I, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't fall under these uh, these categories of income and it's any other income, you'll be disqualified uh, from the 0% rate, uh, which is what I understand. So, of course, if you have some rental income, um, you know, I, I don't think that's covered in this uh, and, and therefore you, you'll fall under the, the disqualification. Okay, so that leads uh, nicely on to another question that... Can you name a couple of exempt sectors that are completely exempt from tax? Like, what about education, healthcare? Are they exempt? There is no, uh, there is no exemption. No exemption. <laughs> okay, we have to be careful about the, 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 the terminology, please. Exempt means there is, they, they, they are not in the purview or the scope of tax itself, mm -hmm. right? But what we have now so far, 
so far, we have these categories. Category number one, that they have to register. Some of them may have zero rate. Some of them may have nine percent. Nine some of them may have 15 percent. This is number one category. The second category, which they will have exemption. That means they do not apply. They do not have to register for tax from the get-go, such as some government-owned entities, which uh, Ms. Shiraz mentioned uh, earlier. The third category are the natural resources, which are enforcing or enforce some kind of income tax by the local authority in each emirate. This is also outside the purview of the income tax so far. This is what we understand according to the information available. This, this may change, of course, when we have the regulation. So these are the main categories. And when we say exempt, we mean they are not or they are excluded in the regulation. Mm. There is no zero mm. rate, no 9%, no 5%, no 15%. When we say they are 0% rate, they are under the purview of the tax, but they are at zero rate, but not exempt. I think what's key here so, for those asking these questions is for you to get your terminologies correct and to understand what exactly are exempt zero rated taxable a taxable individual or taxable company i think getting the terminology in the language and the lingo of the tax world is going to be key for you to ensure that you know what's going forward and that again goes back to you know uh, training asking your companies to go for training and to upskill yourself in this area to then be able to apply the knowledge of the uae to that right um, were you going to add something, Shiraz? Sorry. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, of, of course, there's an exemption for entities which are operating in the oil and gas sector, uh, exploration, extraction. Uh, but this yeah. exemption doesn't extend to subcontractors. And the reason why that's there, already we have an Emirates level tax. And under the UAE constitution, uh, the Emirate actually has a right uh, to the income. Uh, therefore, that's been excluded from the law through this exemption. There's also an exemption for charities as well and organizations uh, which operate for public benefit, so like foundations, perhaps. Fantastic. But as Thank Madame you. mentioned, you know, it, you, you may be exempt, uh, you know, but there may be still a requirement to file a tax return. Uh, different tax laws have different terminologies. So sometimes they say that you're not subject to the law. Uh, but sometimes if you're e exempt, mm. you're subject to the law, but exempt. Uh, so it remains to be seen whether you, there's a filing requirement if you're exempt or not. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'm just looking at some more questions. Uh, Uh, will the corporate tax apply to LLCs as well? I think we've answered that. We said yes, right, to that. And secondly, are there going to be any distinctions based on different industries? I think we've already tackled that as well. Um, and then will the tax percentage be the same for all revenue brackets? Or is there a plan to support SMEs with lower percentages in large-scale organizations? I mean, it's not revenue, is it? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's profits up to three hundred and seventy five thousand pounds is zero percent and above three oh, no it's not pounds no. sorry i keep going back to no. my um to my <laughs> homeland currency I, I i constantly do that when i'm shopping as well i still keep converting after 14 years of being here um three hundred seventy five thousand dirhams and then above three hundred seventy five thousand is nine percent correct me if i'm wrong the expert that's right. panel that's right yeah. okay is the problem yeah. actually it's people are confusing it with the vat because vat yeah. is on the revenue and corporate taxation is on the profit yeah fabulous fabulous it's, right it's, yes it's, it's just Fazila. sorry it's just a it's a ta it's taxable income uh, as determined by the financial statements and adjusted for tax purposes yeah uh, so uh -huh. this is the relevant walking income. talking dictionary um <laughs> shiraz with your terminology is fantastic right so it is five o'clock um and so it's the end of the session i just want to sort of summarize it and then ask any key um takeaway so i want uh, the panelists to think of one thing one takeaway that you would give um our audience today 
For me, I think what was a key takeaway was um, Shiraz starting with why. Um, and that why was really important. It wasn't just because the UAE, you know, wants another sort of revenue source. It was because of the OECD and the requirements and all of that. So I thought that was number one, a really interesting sort of um, way to start the why corporate taxes. I think 9% being the lowest tax rate. Also, UAE wants to still keep that sort of a hub to attract investment and headquarters to be here. I loved what Medak said about it's a marathon, not a sprint, um, and you have to start now. And it will probably just get started, but sort of end when you submit your first tax return. Um, spending more time on planning, upskilling the team, having tax champions. Um, Mohammed talked a lot about awareness um, and getting to know. And I think coming to something like this, and I, I would like to say thank you to Varun. We've got around 100 participants on this, which shows that this is a hot and important topic that many people have questions about. So coming to sessions like this, whether that's online, whether that's face-to-face -face, over the next year is going to be key. And you've got this opportunity to ask experts like this the questions that you have. And these four people look like walking, talking dictionaries who've read every single word of that document and have retained that information and are able to give it to you with the correct sort of terminologies. I think a key thing that Arafat or Muhammad mentioned was being consistent with the accounting uh, policies. Um, and so there was a lot of takeaways there for me, and I'm sure for all of the people on um, online. I will now first go to Mohammed. What key one takeaway would you like to give the audience? Well, the first thing is that we need to make sure that we are up to date with the information. Um, and second thing is that don't wait to start planning now. Uh, so this is like the bottom line. Thank you, thank you so much. Arafat? Planning, planning, and planning. So take it seriously and plan um, your organizational uh, impact assessment. And as what Midad mentioned, like you need to take it seriously, make a team and get a flavor from the outside as well. If you bring some consultants, so you can get a flavor from the outside as well. And you know your organization better. So bring some people who are expert in finance and the other areas, so bring them as well. So just make a good mixture of uh, good skills and you will get a good result then. Fabulous. Thank you. Medat? Well, uh, what I would like to tell everybody, start transforming and changing your culture, your organizational culture now. Don't wait till you hit the deadline of implementing the tax. <laughs> Start yeah. speaking to the people and tell them there is an income tax. Do not fight it. Do not resist it. Do not tell me it's not going to happen. Like what happened in VAT till the last day, everybody was saying it will get delayed, it will get delayed, it will get delayed. That's not going to happen. Let us forget this dream and take it really seriously and change the culture. Go out of our comfort zone, which we are living in for the last five decades. Yeah. Fantastic. And final words from Shiraz. I think I agree with everything what was said by Mohammed, Medat and Arafat. Uh, I think the key is failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And uh, like everyone said, don't wait for the laws and regulations because there may be a lot of work that, that you need to do. Uh, maybe you need to restructure something. Maybe you've done a historical transaction uh, and it was critical for that transaction not to be taxable and the whole structure is based on that. And obviously the introduction of corporate tax has now changed that. Um, and maybe that you need to renegotiate your agreement. So there's a lot of work to be done and we don't know exactly how much time we're going to get uh, until the law, uh, and possibly it may be a law and regulations and maybe the law will be quite brief and a lot of the detail will follow in the regulations. Uh, when we look back at VAT, the corporate tax law was introduced, uh, it was published around July, the end of July uh, 2017 and the regulations were published the end of November or December. So it left very little time. Uh, so the, you, be proactive. Uh, don't wait for the law and regulations to be published because there may be some actions you need to take now. Uh, and you need to you know, join heads with everyone within your organization and work out what the key issues are, are, are for you and the action points are. 
Fantastic. Really valuable words of advice from our four panelists. Thank you ever so much. I can see loads of comments of people saying thank you. Fantastic session. Thank you, Varun, for having me moderate such an exciting topic. I'm now thinking of all those days I was spending in tax planning thinking, did I do right to have a career move when this is such an important topic right now going ahead in the in, in, in this region? But um, thank you. Thank you to the panelists. Well, I look very forward much, everyone. to speaking in more sessions like this with um with all of you and i'll pass it now over to varun great thank you so much uh, fazila thank you panelists uh, i think uh, this was great learning uh, for me being a business owner and i hope it was great learning for everyone i know a lot of people uh, need to leave now but for those of you who can stay i love doing a photo at the end of a discussion like this so if any of you can sort of uh, put your cameras on Fix your hair, get ready for a photo. Uh, and if you can't, feel free to leave. That's absolutely fine as well. Uh, Alvin, you just have to help me out. Uh, uh, remove us from the spotlight, if that's okay. Boring. And then... Yeah. But make sure that uh, the GPS and calculations of decompressions and all, calculate that. There is a log books on that. And, are, and stay on the topics, that's well. okay. <laughs> Are you, okay. is everyone able to mute themselves, please? I think we can hear some conversation. Okay, I, I have it now. Um, so I'm going to say, uh oh, sorry. I'm going to say one, two, three, tax, and then you go after me. One, two, three, tax. Tax. And I'm going to do tax. one more. One, two, three, tax. Brilliant. I think I've got a few photos. So perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, pleasure. Fazila. And thanks, panelists. Thank you, Warren. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.